Oh, shalom, Rastafari. We've fulfilled in his will, hallelujah, in the name of Yeshua, the Sukkot for this season. Sukkot, tabernacles, the Feast of Tabernacles. Is Sukkot really a water festival? The indwelling, right? Shemeni Atzeret, the Sementenyao Gubae, the eighth day assembly. What's the connection with water? What's the connection with Yeshua? Well, Yeshua is the whole reason for the season. Simul, simul, simul. Listen, Isaiah 12 and 3 says, With joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. Remember the Hoshana Raba? That's the seventh day of Sukkot, right? The day of the great salvation, right? The day of the great salvation. Joy, that's what's coming forward. Simchat Torah, the joy of the Torah. What is the Torah? The Torah is our wisdom in the sight of the Goyim. So go tell Ziggy Marley, you don't have to be jealous of the Jews, right? Because of the Jewish culture. When you know the truth concerning the lion of the tribe of Judah, and you study to show thyself approved. Two, Ha Elohim, as a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But Hawadi Apollos, he said, when the Moshiach comes, he will judge the world by his gospel. And read Romans chapter 10, verse 19, and Romans chapter 11, verse 11. He says he would provoke. He said, does not Israel, the lost black sheep, doth not I and I know? He said he will provoke us to what? Jealousy. <laughs> you saw that clip, you know, give thanks to I love Habasha YouTubes that posted that clip up there. I think it's from Israeli TV or something like that where Ziggy said what he said and a lot of uh, Jews who call themselves Jews are running with that. But we know what the Moshiach's apostles have said, and we know that they should receive the Moshiach, right? So they can rise from their deadness and recognize the King of Kings. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah, right? No convert, originality that, right? So with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. Isaiah 12 and 3. Yeshua, Isis Christos, he once encountered a woman who had come to draw water from a well and said, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty, thirsty again. But everyone who drinks of the wuha, the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. John's Wengel, Johannes Wengel, John's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 13 to 14. Likewise, Adonai, Adonai, he taught earlier in his ministry, in his, in his service to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and through we, to humanity. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. They shall be satiated. Now, what's the connection of this with with, with Sukkot, with the Shemeni Atzeret, Simul, 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 Shemeni Atzeret, that eighth day, that eighth day assembly, right, is to, to pray for the latter, right, the latter rains, so that the season to come, so in, in, the, in the way of the Father, it's always forward ever, backward never, right, so it already has in it the provisions for the Barakat, the blessing in the future. If you would make your will obedient to his influence and to accept Yeshua. Matthew 5 and 6. Just as the people understood that they needed physical rain. To do what? 
to sustain. Sustain what? Their lives. So, <laughs> Yeshua, he pointed to himself as the source of the spiritual, the spiritual reign, Menfisawi Zinah, or the living, right? not the dead water, not the fluoridated water, you know what I'm saying? But the living water, you speak about the Iodine, the Yadin water, right? That would sustain their spiritual, the iritical, if you please, lives. Do you believe the reign of blessing? You see, when we talk about the, um, the Zot Ha Baraka, you understand? When we speak about, yeah, yeah, Barakabat, you know what I mean? Uh, Barakat Yehichnat. When we're speaking about this is the Barakat, this is the Baraka or Bruka, as some say, right? It's the rain. Speaking about that rain, speaking about that, that water, the rain of blessing. Then referring to the refreshing power of the Memphis Kedus, the Ruach HaKadosh, the Ayla Ayrit, the Spirit of Truth, that would become an inner in the innermost of the inner sense and inner source of life, of Hewet, for those who believe. Do you believe now? As Yeshua said, out of his inmost, his innermost, the innermost of the inner sense, out of his inmost being will flow rivers of living water, which some have thought that that referred to the miraculous waters that were given in the desert. And this is why, once again, when I heal up, right, when I heal up L.O.J. Yissachar and Wendem Alonso for this art right here, because you see the water, the rock, and this is as the rock hewn as uh, <laughs> Georgis right here. And you can see the the Aaron or the... the um. Uh, Musa and Aaron, remember the connection with the Mount of Transfiguration, where one of those two was there, and that was Moses. Now, some ask, well, who's going to be the two witnesses? Well, those two witnesses on the Mount of Transfiguration are certainly worthy candidates. But Abba knows, Father knows, Abba knows best, Abba knows bless. So each soul will be a rock smitten in the thirsty land from which crystal rivers of life giving grace, sega, right? and the grace also connects with the gifts, the ministry gifts shall flow. Indeed, the Hallel is recited during the festival and includes a verse, a verse from Psalm 114 and 8, where it says, He turned the rock into a pool of wuha, of water, the flint into a fountain of waters. Now we see in the creeping coup and the great transgression against his imperial majesty that famine had came, that the rains stopped. That's what basically happened. The rains were very erratic. The rains stopped because in that same Psalm, Psalm 68, Right? Before you get to verse 30, 31, right, where it says, Princes, Mequanin, princes shall come out of Egypt, right? And Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God. It also says that the wicked, right, the rebellious actually, the word is rebellious, that's the key, that's the operative word, the rebellious dwell in a dry land. So that's your answer to, you know, the famine problem, not just in Ethiopia, but we can say globally, because the famine has come to America, right? Or America, right? So the Baraket is so important to I and I, perhaps more so now than at any other time, especially the season that we're in, the Shimata season, right? And the Shimata season, interestingly enough, it began on Rosh Hashanah. Right? Rosh Hashanah. So this is very interesting when we look at Rosh Hashanah, that blowing of the trumpet. It, it, it could be the first trumpet. There's a first trumpet. It might as well be the last. Right? So we know that that was given to Barahana Selassie. Right? In inspiration. Just like with Peter, 
what Peter said of the Moshiach. He said that flesh and blood could not have told you this. The first and the last trumpet. It could be the first trumpet, might as well be the last. I hope ones like Ziggy and others really start to maybe learn something. Maybe that's, you know, he says, as, as the Father says in his word, he will provoke, right? He will provoke to jealousy, provoke I and I to jealousy with a people, Chazaz, anybody, who are no people, right? And with a foolish nation. You see what's going on in the East. You see what's going on over there in the Far East. You know what I mean? Or not the Far East, but, you know, the so-called Middle East, which is just basically... Um, the eastern part of Africa, right? The eastern part of Africa. So, the Feast of Tabernacles from the ancient most times was connected as a with the water. So, the, the, the water is a very important symbol. Now, on the surface reading, you would think that Sukkot is just, okay, we dwell in tabernacles, you know, in tents for a while and eat and rejoice and celebrate and fellowship with one another. And you will basically miss, right, the half of the story, right? It has to do with those waters. It has, the, the baraka has to do, the baraket, right, has to do with the rain. So you have to understand the, the type Right, you have to understand the shadow, and we're speaking of the Belui Kidan or the Berit Hashana, and the Berit Hashana is to say the Old Testament or the Old Cycle. You need to understand and into it, right, and get into it the Old Cycle, right. So you will understand basically the New. Now let me just bring this up again because um, some of the pages got. Some of the pages got slightly lost, but look for, forward uh, for that Bob Marley one. We want to get into that a little bit more. Because some of you are hearing that it will upset you all and make you angry because you're probably not standing on the foundation. Get off that sinking sand, right? And, and, and stand upon the rock, right? Upon Ja Rock, I and I stand. So when the wind blow and the rain fall, right, the house will stand. As, and that's a symbolism well, that's symbolic for this time, right? This time of uh, tribulation, right? And in this tribulation time that we are in and in the increase in this tribulation time that there's no doubt that many of us will be going through. Many of us already are experiencing that, but the world is really going to get it, right? The world got to get it. The world got to get it good, right? Um, and because they need it. You know, they really need that. They need that wake-up call right there. So let's go forward right here. Um, and we was actually on the page. Let's see. We was on Sukkot. Is it Sukkot 7? Um, actually, yes. We was on page Sukkot 7, which is the Hoshana Rabbah. So let's kind of connect that with this right, this portion. We want to go through at least a little, a little kind of an overview of, of, of what this is about and give some important um, references that ones, if they're willing, right, can study up more and be filled and not thirsty, right, and not thirsty, right, not spiritually thirsty. So, Hoshana Rabbah, if that represents, as the sages from previous ages taught us, the judgment being delivered. So, there's three keys. There's Rosh Hashanah, right, there's a Rosh Hashanah. Let me show you this right here. So you can see this um, feet left feet, right? Face to face. So we have right there, we have Rosh Hashanah, right? Where the trumpet is blown, right? And the judgment is rendered. Mm -hmm. Then there's, there's 10 days, the 10 days of awe, right? Which are those 10 days of, you could say, the deliberation, right? You know, like when the judge, you know, um, you know, he, they, they deliberate, you know? And then they're going to bring the court back into session. Then we have Yom Kippur, where the judgment is sealed. Then we have Hoshana Rabbah, which is the seventh day of Sukkot. Right? The seventh day of Sukkot, about a day or two ago, within this season. Right? Within this season. But it's not limited to the season so much. You have to understand that. It's not limited to the season. But in the seasons, we have an appointment. So it's, we're keeping, we're seeking to keep that appointment, right? We're seeking to keep that appointment in spirit and in truth. Not in the old, but in Yeshua HaMoshiach. So 
the early sages were correct with that, right? And we can see the connection in the New Testament that records that it was on that last day of Sukkot, which was the great day, right? Just before the water libation ceremony that Yeshua, he stood up and cried. We find that uh, cried means shouted, right? He, he lift up his voice as a trumpet, as Isaiah says elsewhere. John chapter 7, verse 37 to 38 and what did he cry? He said, if anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. Whosoever be lives, be living in I, in Isis Christos, Yeshua HaMoshiach, in Adoni I, as the scripture, the Metzhaf, that the King of Kings, our Father says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. Right? And we are to bring glory as Rastafari, as elect, to his name. Right. As the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow or shall flow, if you please, rivers of living water, not stagnant waters, but rivers of living waters. So Hoshana Raba, we can say, represents the judgment being delivered. Right. And I, I showed you earlier, right, on the on the Ethiopian uh, the weather and it's interesting because tonight over in Ethiopia which probably is coming up any time now about seven hours or so difference uh, maybe in a couple more hours hopefully by the time you see this the rains will be coming coming down over there and that now ensures right if ones have properly prepared with due diligence that ensures the upcoming the upcoming harvest Right, so the connection with the harvest. So we have the natural, the two truths. We have the natural, right, or the physical, the five cycle, and we have the metaphysical or the spiritual, right? We have the exoteric, so to speak, and we have the esoteric, right? So Yeshua, he was teaching that the spirit, the ruach of Ha Elohim of his power, our power, his father, our father, his Abba, our Abba, would I liver, would deliver the good, the tob, right, the good verdict, the good judgment, the true freeness, right, that the Moshia secured for I and I through his own sacrificial death as I and I at one meant Tau before Elohim, his power, before Avinu, Abinu, Abatachin, right? Abuna, right? Zebesemayat, our father. So, my brothers and sisters, this is this is one part. We want to touch a little bit more on the Shemeni Atzeret, but the Holy Spirit wanted us to touch on the seventh day, right? Or the last day, which is the Hoshana. Right, the Hoshana Rabbah and its uh, particular connection, right, the great salvation, the particular connection, right, with the water and with the living waters. May the eye receive the living waters within the innermost of the eye's innocence. In the name of Bashem Yeshua, HaMoshia, in the name of I and I, Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the glory of Eloheinu, Avinu. I and I, power, I and I, Father. Kadamawi, Haile Selassie, Shalom, Aras, Teferi.